Hey fam, and God bless you. I'm excited that you could join us today. We are Rock West, the family church with excellence. If you find yourself in the Nairobi area, come out to Westlands at Movin Peak Hotel. We have our services here every Sunday at 10 a.m. without fail. We have, ev we have something for every age group. If you have kids, let them come out to our Sunday school class. If you have teens, come out. We have a great teens program. If you have youth in your home, come and let's let them come together and discuss youth things and youth issues. We are ready and prepared for you. Our main services begin at 10 a.m. to 12.30 every Sunday. Hey, listen, the word of the Lord is real and active in your life. Today, as you listen in, listen with an open heart. I know that the Lord will speak to you. The Holy Spirit is at work, and I know that someone's life is about to change, and someone's destiny is about to take a whole new tangent. God bless you and keep you. Stay tuned to the Word. As I was preparing and when Pastor Don asked me to uh, come and minister, I realized the blessing that we are sitting under. So many things. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe in the providence of God. That on such a time, we are standing here as the third generation. I even wanted to ask Pastor Don, should we be calling Reverend Julian, Papa Julian? <laughs> should we be calling Grandfather? <laughs> Because we are actually representing the third generation. And as we are representing the third generation, we are also the firstborn amongst the assemblies. And we are celebrating three years. There is no coincidence with God. Tell your neighbor again, there is no coincidence with God. And as much as I was overwhelmed when my pastor asked me to minister... You have to go back to where God first called you. Because he sustains the word he spoke from the beginning. It doesn't change. And so my conviction for ministry is that I am a follower with a leader, a student with a teacher. Any example he sets and any lesson he teaches me, once I have done the assignment and he's happy with the assignment, I'm allowed to come and present it to my classmates. So anytime my phone rings and I'm asked, Pastor Flavia, can you come and speak? I have to go back to God and ask him, Father, what example have you been setting in this season? And what teaching, Jesus, have you been teaching? And what assignment did you give me? And I handed in my assignment. And now you are calling me to share with the rest of my classmates. That's how I perceive my calling to ministry. That's how I see it. So if he doesn't confirm that there was an assignment that I did well. And he's happy for me to present it. Then I will say no. But if he confirms that there's something he's saying. And there's something he has been saying. Then I come with the confidence that I'm not coming in my name. But I'm coming with a message that has already been established. And us gathering is just aligning ourselves to that which God was doing. So as I come to the message for this morning, my message is titled, The Father's Endorsement. The Father's Endorsements. And there's two things I want to say. As we seek to have a deeper and authentic relationship with God. There are two examples of relationships that God has given. The number one example he has given is sonship. And so we have been in a season as assemblies of sons of God manifesting. But the other relationship that is described to us is the bride of of Christ. And so I'm not surprised even as Pastor Don is saying that God will start doing something with women. But I'm even coming to say, Father, God will start doing something with marriages. Because marriages 
will reflect the relationship of what he means when he says, I am your husband and you are my bride. So as we mature in sonship, which means we have dominion on earth, he's preparing us to become the bride so that he can come back for a bride that is without blemish. And if it's that season that we are entering into, then it also means that marriages will start being aligned. You will start seeing kingdom collaborations so that the image of the relationship of God with the bride can be seen physically. Because he has shown us fatherhood. Fatherhood and sonship is being restored in Africa in the right way. But somebody is asking, Pastor Flav, why did you pick the term endorsement? If you realize in scripture, Jesus gives the parable of the prodigal son. And the prodigal son becomes the prodigal because of wealth and resources and inheritance. So as I was praying, the Lord told me, I want you to go and look at the definition of the word endorsement. An endorsement in legal and banking terms means signing an instrument of negotiation so that rights of ownership can be transferred to someone. And so in scripture, when God talks about sonship, he talks about the prodigal son. Because with sonship, it's about dominion, it's about power, and it's about inheritance and influence. But when it comes to the bride, it's about relationship, intimacy, and redemption. Please don't lose me. The reason I picked the father's endorsement is because sonship is tied to dominion, power, influence, and inheritance. And there are different types of endorsements. Somebody can give a general endorsement where they sign, but they don't give the name of the person. And so it's open. Somebody can give a final endorsement where they sign and they give the name of the person who is supposed to have it. Somebody can give what they call a son recourse endorsement where they give it to you, but they don't take liability of what you do with what you have been given. Somebody can give a conditional or a partial endorsement. But when it comes to the father, because he is not man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should change his mind, his endorsement is final. So before he gives it, there has to be an evaluation of, do you deserve this endorsement? Endorsement in the Gen Z and the current generation is getting somebody that can push a product. So imagine God deciding he will push you as his product. And the best example to look at sonship, who else than Jesus? And so we go to Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11. And we will also come back to the journey that led to Jesus getting to this place. And you will see some of the things that God has been doing without our knowledge. And as we get that in the scripture, as we continue, Pasi, this is prophetic. All of us, I want you to go on a journey of where you were three years ago. Because as we were praying this morning you will realize that the time Jesus comes to the public, he's 30. And the Lord was telling me, I can take 30 years, condense them to three years, condense them to three days, when my son has my endorsement. Just remember that, that he can take 30 years of being behind the scene, achieve the purpose in three years, resurrect him in three days, and the assignment is accomplished. Some of us who are seated here, God will condense 30 years. God 
is condensing the last three years. And he has just added, he's also condensing the next three months. And some people, it will be in three days. Some of us who have been crying behind the scene, you did not know that it was the father's endorsement. That by the time you show up, they will know that they know that they know that there is a God who is backing you up. Because some of the things you are able to achieve, the timeline will not make sense. But because Jesus is backing you up, he is saying, I have signed the instruments of negotiation. Before you get to them, you have to come to me. Start processing. For those of us who are above 30 years, go back 30 years. Go back three years. Come and project the next three months as we come to the end of 2023. But also think about the first three days of 2024. That's the God we are talking about. And so as I read this, I was, the more you understand the plan God has, the more you realize how small you are in his eyes. And that's why when you see some of us crying, we are not crying because we are sad. We are crying because we are overwhelmed. That this creator of the universe, can choose to focus on your life with so much detail and so much pattern and so much intentionality that you can do nothing but bow down before him and tell him, you know what, you take the glory. I have tried to visualize what you can do, but when I think I've understood you, you surprise me. That you can take 30 years condense them in three years. He can take three years and condense them in three months. And he can even take that and condense it in three days. But how do you get there? Philippians tells us that in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1, it says, so if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, Complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of the mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. Here is my key word. But in humility, count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only on his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Listen to Paul's instructions. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Remember, this is God. And being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Listen, therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every other name. So that at the name of Jesus, every knee bows in heaven and on earth and underneath the earth. And every tongue confesses that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God uses Jesus as the template of how endorsement comes. Now, I want us to discuss three things and we will go through them slowly. The first thing is that when God is endorsing you, there is a pronouncement that affirms your identity. But the danger is, there is need to be humility. Why do I say that? Let's go to Luke chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. It's been 30 years. The last time we saw Jesus, he was 12. Remember, he's fully God and fully man. At the age of 12, he was in the temple. 
His parents forgot him. We never heard from him. So the scripture says, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus was also baptized. And while he prayed, the heaven was opened. And the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven which said, you are my beloved son. In you, I am well pleased. This is the first time God endorses the fact that this is my son. But do you realize that in Jewish culture, children were taken to school at the age of five. They would go to school until the age of 12. And then the boys will be left to continue school in the synagogue. And the girls will continue being trained at home. When the boys turned 20... If there was potential of this boy becoming a religious leader or teacher, they had to go and do an apprenticeship in the synagogue for 10 years so that you could only show up when you're 30. Let's start from there. How many of us today want to be born again today and to be in the pulpit in six months? Yet the Son of God took up bodily form and submitted himself to the point that they believe he was going through an apprenticeship for 10 years. Working with people that you feel like telling them, I can call this building down and it will fall on you. Walking with people that you can tell, I know that Torah from cover to cover because I am he who you are reading. But he chose to sit under an apprenticeship for 10 years. He even comes and is baptized by someone who is saying, I'm not the one who should be baptizing you. You should be the one baptizing us. How many of us has God taken through a process? But you are there complaining. It is taking too long, Parsi. How long? Have you done 10 years of apprenticeship? In Rock, we are only giving you two years of pastoral internship. We are giving you one year of pastoral uh, of internship. But Jesus did 10 years of synagogue. Apprenticeship. Paul extended and even did 14 years because he felt he needed to get more. Do you really know what it takes for God to endorse you? Are we living in a generation that wants a quick fix and you just complain, how long? Why me? How long? Why me? But yet God is looking at you and he's saying, if you knew, that after I have tried you, you will come forth as gold. A pronouncement that affirms identity but requires a lot of humility. The environments, I am teaching at the Ruach Leadership Institute. And I was telling uh, some people who are telling me, Pass, he pray for me to get a job. I want this kind of environment. I said, I'm not going to pray for the environment you want. Because God is not looking at you now. He's looking at you based on the purpose and the plan he has for you. My biggest challenge was working with the Ismaili community. I have nothing against the Ismaili community. But these people value their education. Because they have the schools. They have the hospitals. And here comes the first black young lady working in a community that has never seen a different type of people working for them. And my doctor told me, Flavia, it's either you leave this job or you will get acidity. You will get ulcers because my acidity levels were to the roof. And the Lord comes and says, these people value honor. I had to go back home and cram 400 names and professions of these parents. And when the parent comes, the next time I tell them, oh, Dr. So-and-so, how is the dental clinic? Good morning, Flavia. 
But the other times, you would say good morning, and they pass. And the Lord said, just because they want honor, give it to them. Who knew that many years later, I would also find myself in an environment working with men, 42 men. But I'm the only lady sitting in the board. But because of the experience that I had at that school on honor, it was very easy to work with these guys. The other day, somebody was making fun and they were like, how are you able to penetrate these male-dominated spaces? And I was like, I sat under the apprenticeship of God. When I was working in an environment that I didn't like, but oh my God, God was molding me for what he was seeing. Some of us need to repent right now. Because that place you are complaining about, God was nifinyange, nifinyange. There are some songs you sing, my friend. Do you really want him to finyanga you? That's how he finyangas you. By giving you a workspace that is almost like crazy. But he's putting your, uh, his endorsement on you. That when you come out, will say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. We measure success by what we have acquired. God measures success by the humility that you have when you realize all that you have was because of him. But number two, there is a power that confirms your mandates, which is built through devotion. There is a power that confirms your mandates, which is built through devotion. Again, look at this. Luke chapter 9, verse 35. Jesus has just asked the disciples, who do people say I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ. And in Luke chapter 9, it says, eight days later, he took Peter, James, and John to the mountain to do what? Not to chop a story. To do what? To pray. Some of us like hanging out with the man of God more than the God of the man. The man of God is taking you to the mountain not to spend time with him, but to introduce you to his God. You better seek the same God he's seeking. Jesus asked the disciples, couldn't you tarry with me a little longer? Proximity does not bring endorsement. Devotion and spiritual disciplines grow your muscle so that it is God who endorses you and makes you a blessing to the man of God as you bring glory to the God of the man. And so Jesus is transfigured right before them. And this was so that Luke Chapter, chapter 24, verse 44 could be fulfilled. Jesus says that all these things I have told you have to happen according to what? The law of Moses and the prophets. He's telling them, I am having this discussion on law and prophecy because I have to be the grace that manifests the mandates that I was called to. Sometimes we think, Oh, we are fasting again. Pastor Don, 30 days again. Why? It's because there is a mandate that is coming. And this preparation will require that. Because immediately they come out from the transfiguration. They go and try to cast out a demon. You have just seen the son of God transfigured before you. But you can't cast out a demon. And he says, this one does not come out the way you thought. This one can only come out through prayer and fasting. There are certain spiritual disciplines we have to engage in as the body of Christ. If you want the power, if you want the glory, he will not endorse it if he knows you haven't been spending time with him. You haven't been sacrificing Putting aside what Pastor Don was telling us last time. There are appetites you need to let go. So that when you show up, the demon does not even discuss. And it will not ask Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, who are you? 
They have just seen the Son of God transfigured right in front of their eyes. They go back and get a demoniac. And they are not able to cast the demon. Can the Father endorse you? A power that confirms your mandate, but it comes through devotion. But the third thing I want to share is that there will be a performance that displays victory through the perfect sacrifice. I love this when, John, when, when Jesus prays in the book of John, chapter 17 and verse 1 to 5. But before we read that, um, we could read John chapter 12, verse 26 to 32. Listen to this and then we'll come to John chapter 17. <clears throat> we'll read John chapter 12, verse 36. And it says, while you have the light, believe in the light that you may become the son of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden from them. Let's continue. And he continues to say, but although he had done so many signs before them, they did not believe him. And he continues to say that the word of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And Jesus comes. Therefore, they could not believe because Isaiah said again. Let's continue. He has blinded their eyes and has hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts, and turn so that I should heal them. This is where uh, it comes and says, then things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of them. I want the verse that says, Jesus asking the Father, glorify yourself like you glorified yourself before. And God responds and said, I have glorified myself just like I did before. Am I in the right place? Let me see. Is that 42? Let's go to 42. Let's see 42. Okay. 42. The person behind the scriptures. Okay. Let me open it. John. Sorry. 13. 1332. Who is helping me? Prophetess, are you the one who is telling me? 1228. 1228. Sorry. Um, yes. Thank you. 1227 says, Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Uh, what shall I say? Father, Save me from this hour, but for this purpose, I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Again here, a voice is heard. The, and, and, sorry, the endorsement of the Father. And he says, I have glorified it. And I will glorify again. This is the father saying the glory is coming. Just like they saw it at the transfiguration. They're about to see it at the crucifixion. Now read chapter 17 verse 1 to 5. I love this. This is a prayer we should be praying often. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son. That the son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all flesh. To give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life. That they may know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth. Having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had before the world existed. This gentleman has humiliated 33 years of people looking down on him. Of people who have seen miracles not believing in him. 
But something very beautiful happens. In Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And now this endorsement that has been happening is not coming from God the Father. It is coming from the witnesses who are seeing the glory right in front of their eyes. Yeah? Aha. Uh -huh. I, wanted, I wanted the one that says, surely he was the son of God. It is not him who is saying. It is the people that are now saying, surely he was the son of God. Yeah? Surely he was the son of God. And I think that is, um, um, just a second. Whom I am well pleased. Matthew 27, 54. Is that correct? Let me see. Matthew 27, 54. Let's see that. Matthew 27, 54. Yes, so when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus, remember I said there is a performance that confirms victory through the perfect sacrifice. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and the things that happened, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Now it's not coming from heaven. It's coming from the same people that mocked him. And in Corinthians, Paul says he made a spectacle of them. Because if they had known what putting Jesus on the cross would result to, they wouldn't have put in in the first place. I come with an encouragement to all of us. Some of us, we are in three categories. Some of us have been behind the scenes. And you've been asking God, how long, how long, how long? And I'm here to tell you, you have been in the apprenticeship. Because if you desire to teach the things of God, you cannot teach from theory. You can teach from experience and victory so that you become a voice in that area. Don't you know that the, uh, the enemy tests you from the core of your existence? After Jesus has been told he is the son of God, who God is pleased, he's taken to the desert. And the enemy asks him, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Yet, he was the bread of life. Please don't miss it. He tells him, if you bow down, I'll give you everything that you're seeing. Yet the earth and the fullness thereof belongs to him. If you throw yourself, the word says, the angels will catch you. Yet he's the word manifested in flesh. Sometimes we give so much credit to the enemy. But the enemy shows you the substance you are made of. As we stand on our feet, because we are going to pray. Tell your neighbor we are going to pray. Let's stand. We are going to pray. Let's stand on our feet. Come on. Come on. Come on. We are going to pray. Amen. Are you seeing the Father's endorsement in your life? Are you realizing that from complaining, you should actually be thanking him? That I am so grateful I went through what I went through. I have a testimony, Pastor Don. 1st of February 2000, I told you to go three years back. I was in a train from Taj Mahal to Delhi. And I was watching the news in the train. And they were talking about COVID. And I said, oh my God, these Chinese countries, some of the diseases they get. I was feeling sorry for them. 
I landed in Kenya on the 4th of February from India. And on the plane, the Lord said, your assignment in the current place you're in is over. I had only been a chaplain at the hotel for nine months. Small hotel in the village. Having left a job, a big job with a big church of 10,000 members. One of the departmental pastors. But I had had God directing me to go to that hotel to be a chaplain. Nine months later, the Lord is saying, your assignment is over. And I told, I said, the enemy, get behind me. It's only been nine months. What do you mean? I used to go away to the mountain to pray once a week. And again, when I'm on the mountain, the Lord says, this event you are having on 9th of March is your last event in this assignment. 13th of March, COVID is announced. In Kenya. And 23rd of March, we are sent home indefinitely. You pastor who was serving in a big church and you said God had called you to be a chaplain in a hotel. Where was your God now that nine months later you don't have a job? You are at home. You don't know if to go to the church or to stay at home. You are also asking God, what are you saying? And the Lord says, I want you to take a one-year sabbatical. One year. One year is a very long time when you are not doing something. One year is a very long time when you are 38 without a job and living with your relative. Having given everything that you had. And I say, Lord, I have learned how to hear your voice. I don't think you made a mistake. But in this process, there are people who are asking, did she really hear God? Was she sure she was supposed to have left the job she was getting? But you stick it out. And two weeks after the Lord says, you need to take a sabbatical, I get an email telling me I have gotten a scholarship to do my master's. I could not have been able to take the work in that master's if I was still in that job. I had saved enough money to go to Everest, not knowing the Everest I was going to was the Everest of my God in my house. God grilling you and saying that even your needs are taken care of for the next one year. And when one year ended like this, on the 23rd of March, the phones started ringing. Can you come and do a consultancy for us? Can you come and do a consultancy for us? I came to Rem office, Pastor Don, August last year. And Rev is prophesying, you are not done. You are not done. Your problem has been, you thought that God had left you. But God wants to praise you, wants you to praise him now because of the acceleration he's bringing you. One week later, I'm seated at a coffee shop with someone. And by the time he's leaving on the plane, he's saying, I want you to be the team leader of my organization. I'm telling you, go back three years today. Go back three years. There's something God started with this COVID thing. COVID was not an accident. COVID was a test. And there are some lessons that will carry us for a very long time. As long as you stick to it. Because during that process, there is an endorsement that happened. So stop looking at Pastor Flav. I want you to dig deep because we are going to align with the calendar of heaven this afternoon. Three years condensed to three months. And even condensed to three days. I promise you, this is not me. I cannot come up with that kind of calculation. That is the Holy Ghost saying, it's not a coincidence that we are sitting under a grace of a church that was birthed in that timeline. We only have three months to go in 2022. October, November, December. And some of us, by the 3rd of January... People will be looking at you and wondering, what happened to you? 
Because some of us, nothing will have happened by 31st of December. But by the 3rd of January, a turnaround. Because this is a God who endorses who you are according to his eyes. I hope you have been blessed. For anyone with any inquiries, anybody who needs any prayer, there's information at the bottom of the screen right now. Reach out to somebody. We have prayer teams working round the clock, ready to listen to you. Call now and somebody will be on hold to pray with you. Again, if you're in the Nairobi metropolitan area, come out every Sunday. We meet right here at the Movenby Hotel. We are excited that you could be a part of our service today. Any details that you may need, look at your screen right now and all the information on our social media pages. Please just join, subscribe, and listen out and look out for anything that we will be putting out there. We're excited that you could be a part of us. I hope this word has blessed you. Your life will never be the same again. God bless you until next time. Thank you.